Hi, welcome to the part four of the day five of DP workshop where we are learning to code DP iteratively. Now this is going to be another interesting problem which we're going to solve. This is going to be one of the most classical problems that you have seen today at least. And this is going to be find the largest sum subarray of an array. A very, very famous problem, right? Find the maximum sum subarray. You have to choose a subarray out of the array and that has to has the maximum sum. Okay. And in this case, I can see that uh, like you can take maybe this subarray is going to have five plus. So this is going to be, uh, you can try and find out the sum over here real quick. This is going to be five plus minus three, which is going to be two plus two plus equal to four plus nine is going to 13 minus one, 12 plus seven, 13, 17, right? So 12, 17. So this is going to have a 17 sum in total. You cannot really do better than 17 in this particular case, right? One way I can see that is like, even if you go beyond this on this side, it's going to include minus 10, but you cannot get even positive more than that. So it should not be any, any optimal. And on this side, it's a negative number. Why to take that, right? So you have to find the largest subarray sum and we are given some n less than equal to 10 to the power 5 let's say like this the, the size array is over here and the elements a of i could be up till 10 to the power uh, 10 to the power 9 maybe let's take that way so we need to find the largest sum subarray this is a very very classical problem now the idea about this particular problem is how do you actually solve it with dp i mean because this seem like a dp problem right many of you might already know this problem it's a very very classical problem something like kdane or so you might have heard about the names but how do you solve it with dp Okay, and it turns out that we, this is a very, very elegant problem of form two. We can use a form two for this one. You can also use form one. There is this one video that I have made on my channel called multi-level DP. You can actually use that to solve this problem. It's a very powerful tool, which is like, this is a very, very simple problem for that. <laughs> Never use that for this question though, uh, but we can use a form two for this particular problem, right? What is the form two? We're going to say that from this, we're going to say the states, which is going to be equal to DP of uh, the index or the level, right? And it's going to tell us, okay, what is the best sub array sum ending at the index level, ending at level in, I'm going to assume it's one index just for this month, or maybe it's zero index, let's say zero to level. Doesn't really matter much. Okay. So if I want to find out what is the best sub array sum ending at this particular point, I can like, maybe this is the best sub array sum. Okay. So this is what we're going to save. DP of level is going to return. What is the best sub array sum ending at this index? Okay. It has to end over here for sure. So this element is taken for sure. And in this question, we are dealing with non empty sub arrays. Okay. Uh, over here now, how do we decide the transitions? So let's, let's look at the transition. This is a very, very neat transition. I mean, if you understand the transitions quickly, it's going to be very, very neat. Okay. So let's say there is this particular part where you have this as the current level that you're solving for. Okay. And let's say this is the level minus one. This is level minus one. Okay. This is level minus one. Now level minus one contains what is the best DP of level minus one is going to be best sub array. Let's say starting over here this much this is the best sum that you can end over here okay now over here at level we want to find the best sums best sub array ending over here so it can be either this or this or this or this or this or this or this something like this so these are going to be the sub arrays that might be the answer over here for this index okay now for all these sub array sums you can try and see that there is this piece over here which is common to all of them which is this one okay this element is going to be present for all and then you are dealing with either zero or this element, this element, this element, this element, this element, this element, right? We want to find max across all these things. All of them has this A of level or the element at level common, except that zero, this, 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 and all is all thing over here, right? Now, a very, very interesting observation, except zero, everything on the top, okay? If you want to find the max of everything on this side, it's nothing but this index DP of level minus one actually stored the best sub array ending over here, which is nothing but the max of these things. It's the same problem over here, right? So we can try and write the transition that out of these, whichever one is the best. Okay. Whichever one is the best. Let's say, let's say, uh, this is the best one. Okay. This is the best one. We extend it by one index. So we can try and write the transitions over here. So we're going to write the transition over here. Let's say DP of level is going to be equal to 
either you extend the previous best by one adding one element because all of the, out of all of these things the best one was this or you, like and you extend it by one element so it's going to be dp of level minus one plus you extend it by this let's say arr of the level element you extend it by one element right or the other option that you have is maybe you don't extend and you just take the single element over here so it's going to be arr of level these are the two different options that we have and out of this whichever is best is going to be the dp's value so it's going to be min of these two okay so that's the transition either you extend the previous best or you start a new best over here that's the main idea for this particular problem okay and if you think about a time complexity very very time complexity check very very easy uh this can take n different values there are only two transitions so it's going to be o of n i'm not even writing the formula anymore for these simple stuff now and uh, once we are done with time constraint, we can simply code this up as well iteratively. So let's go ahead and quickly code this up. We can see this was the last code that we did. Let's remove this one and let's try to solve the problem directly. So integer n, scene n, integer arr of n for integer arr, okay, for integer i equal to zero, i is less than n, i plus plus, and scene. Error of i. Now, once you once you have taken error of i, uh, what we can try and do is we can try solve the DP array. Note that in most of our problems that I have been solving in the sessions, we didn't really consider the data type of DP. Most of them would might require long long int because in this case the sum can exceed the ten to the power nine limit, so we should keep it in a long long. So long long DP of n for every index we're gonna save one for integer i equal to zero i is less than n i plus plus right so for the starting index we don't really have anything to extend so it's going to be dp of if i is equal to equal to zero that's the base case uh dp of i is going to be equal to arr of i okay that's the base case this is just the first element or else dp of i is going to be equal to min of dp of i minus one plus arr of i sorry we have to maximize max of this comma you only extends if the single element this is what we're going to keep at a dp so this is the best sub array ending at this place okay we're going to keep another variable long long uh answer which is going to be equal to let's say by default it's going to be minus one e nine because i mean potentially we can get uh like all elements as negative so in that case the answer should be negative okay whatever the lowest negative number is so this is there and then we're gonna go ahead and do this uh, answer is equal to max of answer comma dp of i so we are like dp of i tells me what is the best ending at this index we need the global best so we go across all the ending points and take the max across all of them so i'm doing that in the same loop and then we can print out the answer that is what is going to give us the uh, final best answer across the whole array so that's the full solution for this particular problem and o of n simple dp loop that can solve this particular problem okay this is the base case this is the general transition and we saved it over here uh, this answer note that this answer is not the dp transition answers this is the different answer this is the global answer okay final answer now uh, why we have been learning iterative coding right uh, most of the things that we're gonna like kind of talk about optimizations and stuff we're gonna do that tomorrow but for today we're gonna understand what may be the like true power. So this is an O of n solution. The time, the memory space as well is O of n. But we might try and optimize a bit of memory, right? Because dp of i only requires dp of i minus one. Okay. So what we can try and keep is maybe something like last. Okay. So instead of this, maybe I can keep long, long last value, which is going to be equal to maybe let's say minus one e nine that matter that should be better okay and uh by default the first state is going to be equal to this okay um or else the this is going to be the last saved value okay plus error of i comma error of i okay and whatever this is this is going to be the last saved dp of i minus one for the next index the last is going to be this or last is going to be equal to this okay so what we're doing is dp of i depends upon only i minus one so if i save i minus one in the value in last i can calculate the value of dp of i in, in a separately over here this is the dp of i and i will save it in the last so that in the next iteration it is there for the next element so for the next element this value is the last value right this is what i can keep and answer is equal to max of dp of i is nothing but stored in last right now so i can keep it over here right 
Now, this code that you're seeing right now is actually the Cadence algorithm code that you kind of learned in DP in Cadence algorithm. Maybe if you if you have learned that, right? It's just that it maybe it it might might take out a uh, thing like uh, taking the max over here with zero at times. I mean, there are multiple ways to write the same thing with this, right? Last is equal to this with this and Maybe uh, depending upon the problem, if you allow empty subarrays, it might be written in a bit different way. But this is the whole idea of Cadence algorithm. Now you have a O of one memory space, which is going to solve it in much more neat way. So sometimes you can actually use some optimizations that might reduce the space. We might see that there are ways to actually reduce times for a lot of transitions too. If you write it in an iterative way at times, maybe by building prefix sums on top of things or maintaining some other data structure. But these are some things that we're going to take up tomorrow, which is going to be optimizations on top of DP and some like miscellaneous problems. Maybe that is something we're going to do. So that's all for day five of the whole DP workshop. I hope you are enjoying the learnings that we are getting over here and we kind of saw a lot of different miscellaneous ideas. Make sure that you kind of code the previous coded problems in iterative fashion as well, just to get a hang of it. Uh, one very, very important thing uh, in the discussion session tonight, which is like going to be for the day five, we're going to discuss at coder DP contest, right? So that's another like standard coding contest that people learn from DP from. So we're going to solve those questions using the learnings of the form so that we can see if you are able to actually solve them or not. And uh, maybe I will code them and you can see me coding multiple different questions so that you can get a hang of how we can use these things. And that should be mostly all that we have for till day five. Uh, next is optimizations and stuff. So see you there in that particular day. And in fact, see you in the live sessions if you are like kind of joining in the live sessions as well. So that's all. Like the video and see you in the video or the live session. Bye-bye.